This is Harry Jaffer Boxing Social in partnership with Empire Fight Store. It's the day before fight night and I'm joined by Adam Morley. How are you first of all mate? It's been a long, long time, but good Christmas. I don't think we can say Happy New Year anymore, but um, I hope all is well mate. All good? All good, thank you. Yeah, all good. Been working hard. It's a busy time of the year coming up now for our, for our fighters. Big weekend for Janae Boston. Um, Matchroom's knockout artist. What a year last year. I asked him if he could top last year, but obviously with you being working close with him, how can you top 2022? Look, look uh, Janae's a young guy, right? He's a young guy. He's moving on in his career and he's got to be match made properly. And I think that's the skill working with Matchroom Boxing and Tom Dallas, just trying to get the right next steps each time for Janaid. Janaid needs holding back. He's one of those fighters that needs holding back. He'd fight Josh Kelly tomorrow if we told him that. So we've got to do what's best for him and move him up in the right ways. First eight rounder tomorrow, another eight rounder coming up, and then we have to look how you progress. So, you know, on the one hand, you want Janae to continue this thing as a KO artist to look spectacular. And on the other hand, he needs to grow properly and needs to be tested properly. Yeah, we, I spoke just off camera then. I mean, how hard can it be to sort of pin him down and stop him getting perhaps too ahead of himself? Last year was a fantastic year for, for him, but as a young fighter, it can perhaps, as being a young man, get to your head. How would you sort of pull him back and put him down to ground level? I think, yeah, I think Janaid only needs pull him back from taking on more difficult opponents. His feet are firmly on the ground. After each fight, he, we have like a hot debrief in the change room, a cold debrief after. He's always unhappy. Uh, uh, Janae thinks he's got tons and tons of wave improvement. I mean, that guy does not think he's the finished article. He thinks he can do so much better. So last time, I think he gave himself a six out of 10 or something. So we'll see what he does tomorrow. So Janae doesn't think like that. That's all because, I mean, I didn't get the chance to speak to him after the, the, the Leeds fight night. It was, it was an odd night anyway with the, the England game sort of half-time before, but I didn't get that, that a chance to speak to him. So um, in terms of this fight coming this Saturday, what are you expecting from him? Look, he's, he's got an opponent, experienced opponent. He's been around the block. I'm expecting rounds. I'm expecting rounds for Janaid, but I'm also expecting Janaid to show that he can go up the gears. He can be a bit tighter than he was last time, not get hit, push on and, and show us what he's got. Show us that improvement from the last fight and show Grant in particular that he's listening to Grant and he's doing the things Grant wants him to do. You said about him being sort of his feet being firmly on the ground. Is that a lot to do with that Grant Smith's gym? You know, it's, um, it's such... You've got British champions, you know, you've got Dalton Smith, and he's such a big influence. Is it, is it that Jim that has made a, a big influence good, in him? I think he's got a good family. I think it's with having Grant there as well. Grant's been his trainer since he was a really young man. And, yeah, I mean, Grant will give him a clip around the ear if he, if he misbehaves. And you all as well? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> But he, he's got a lot, you know, when you've been with, you know, I've only been with Janae the last couple of years. I've been with Grant since he was a really young lad and he's got tons of respect for him. And that does keep his feet on the ground. I mean, look, he's surrounded by elite fighters and he realises where he is. He wants to be like them or even perhaps be an even bigger star than some of them one day. But he realises he's not there now. So his feet are firmly on the ground. There is no danger of Janae thinking he's better than he is. The, the danger is Janaid wants to test himself now against tough opponents, which he potentially could be, but it's not the right, not the right progression for him. Is that always a fighter's mentality, though? A, yeah, a fighter, a young fighter like him, wants to be active. Is it always that a fighter would have fighter's pride and just say, "Look, I want the big fights now"? Is that the way you should kind of see it? A lot of fighters will say they want the big fights, and then. They want tough fights. Then when presented with them, mm, they don't quite fancy it. I think Junaid, if presented with it, would take it. He actually would back it up. I spoke to him the other day. Um, traditional route, is that way to see him going in his career? In sort of the British, then European yeah, and stuff like that? I'd, like, I'd personally like to see Junaid fight for something like a central area title in the next couple fights. And then move up English, British, Commonwealth, European. I think he's young enough. Why, why shouldn't he go the traditional way? Yeah, you don't really see that, because obviously he's with Matchroom and you think with it being at this massive stable, he would have bypassed that central area. So it's quite refreshing to see someone with that viewpoint. Yeah, look, he, sh he should be. He's 20 years old, you know? Yeah. He should be looking at picking up belts, picking up, picking up titles. I think the 154 division in the UK is interesting as well. It doesn't have a lot of 
It's got Liam Smith, obviously, but it doesn't have, and Troy Williamson. It doesn't have a load of big names. It's not stacked like some of the other divisions. So I think there's a real possibility there for Janay to kind of establish himself firmly in Britain as the best in Britain. He should be able to do that. Establish himself as the best in Britain, maybe within the next couple of years. Establish himself as the best in his area this year. Before you start looking at, I mean, people want those into WBA international titles and those kind of things. But for me, it's about Janay's progression. That's the key. And getting him in to be the best fighter he can. And me and Shane and Grant work really tightly on that. Does that give you, you know, going that traditional route, going through the Brit English, well, Central Air, then the English and the British and etc. Does that give you more of a viewpoint than him taking, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an overseas fighter with a good ranking and it gets Janae in the, you know, a good ranking slot but it doesn't actually give you a sort of you know, recollect or, or give you a sight in terms of where he's actually positioned in his career. Yeah, look I think for some fighters at certain stages of their career it's good to have those fights and it is good to, they can get you rankings and I've got nothing against fighting non-British fighters. No. I just think the stage he's at in his career, how young he is, how much time he's got to develop why I think there's got to be a reason for me not to go the traditional way rather than deciding whether to or not. I think you should unless there's a reason not to. And I think the circumstances are such for Janae at the moment, it's the right path for him. Do you find it similar, not frustrations is not the right word, but do you find it hard to match him to certain opponents? You look at Adam Azim as well, someone that's, again, obviously last week he went the distance, good for him perhaps to go the distance as well. There was a lot of critics, unfair critics towards someone at such a young age. Are you in a similar boat trying to match him with different fighters? I don't think so. I don't think we're in exactly the same boat. I think Adam Azim's got a much bigger reputation and so opponents will be probably demanding a lot more money to fight Adam Azim, I would imagine. And, but I think the management of Adam Azim will have the same viewpoint, which is yeah, I mean, yeah. they want him to be built properly. They want him to have those learning fights. I thought that fight last week was perfect for him. Actually, I thought it was great matchmaking. But then, then everyone's saying, oh, the hype train stopped. This guy's knocking everyone out. I mean, I thought Adam Azim's win against Ryland Charlton was an excellent win. I remember when Were you surprised by that? Yeah, I was a bit, actually. I remember Florian boxing him. He was a game-tough opponent. I thought that showed Adam Azim's level, which is high, which is really, really high. I think Janae Boston's level is really, really high. I think they can both go a very long way, but I think it's slightly more difficult for Adam Azim's promoter and management than it is for Janae, just because he's on a mega platform. He's topping bills. Janae's not topping bills. He's topping bills, and when you're topping bills, there's an added pressure that comes with that. All eyes are on you. So there's a bit of extra pressure for him, and the opponents probably want a little bit more money. True, but would you say that the competition for, for being a, a headliner for boxers is different than being a headliner for, for Matchroom because of the stables, do you think? Yeah, but I think Matchroom are going to have next-gen shows, yeah. and so I'm sure they're going to put Junaid high up a next-gen show. So I think Matchroom can, can match Sky in that regard. Following on from different things, we spoke earlier on, just before this interview, Joe Joyce in Vegas. Just tell us an update on how he is. Joe, Joe, yeah, he's loving it. He's uh, out there with um, Shane and Sonny. He's, uh, he's sparring now. Started his sparring. I think we're, you'll know, what, we eight weeks out? The eight weeks out. April the 15th. April the 15th, yeah. He's in a really good position, working hard on his S&C. His weight's in a good place. We like his progression in the gym. Yeah, he's ready. He's ready and raring to go. He's such, you know, so renowned for his chin and durability in the ring, such a tough opponent. Did you hear the, the, the podcast uh, Fighting on the Inside, where he talks about being knocked down in the amateurs of the European Championships? Do you recall those events? Well, I, w I wasn't managing Joe when he was an amateur. No, but do you, do you, have you heard about them? I'm aware, yeah, I'm aware of them, yeah. Um, Sergi Kuzman, I believe his name is, yeah, in the Europeans, being, yeah. being knocked down. I mean, yeah, that's. I, mean, I recommend people watching this interview to go watch, watch the knockdown. It's not kind of what you think it is. Um, he's not like concussively knocked out or something. But yeah, he does, he does touch the canvas. That is, that is right. But I think he's a very different person now. Zhang, April 15th, Copper Box. What a fight that is, mate. Just talk us through that opponent. Obviously, it's an interim WBO title on the line. Had to be a top 15 opponent, and as is the way with Joe, when we talk with the Warrens about matchmaking, 
we don't want Joe in easy fights. That's that's not what this is about. His career needs to keep going in an upward progression. You know, di very different to Janae Boston. Joe doesn't need certain fights right now. We want him to have massive fights. Fury, AJ, Wilder, etc. Usyk, Usyk beat Fury. But we need him to to continue the wave he got on when he beat Parker, and is now, you know, boxing fans will say, yeah, Joe Joyce is a Minimum top five heavyweight. Some, a lot, some people say top three heavyweight. And we've got to capitalise on that. And we've got to show the world. Yeah, he is. And he's not going to back down from anyone. So Zhang was an opponent choice we liked. I think stylistically, it's a matchup that should be great for the fans. Yes. Two guys going to walk straight towards each other. I think Zhang is not being underestimated by us. We have a lot of respect for Zhile Zhang. And I think Zhile Zhang is going to be very, very dangerous in this fight. And as the rounds go on, I think it will favour Joe Joyce. Joe's got a terrific engine. I think most fights favour Joe when you go late. If you remember the Parker fight, I was thinking after six rounds, Joe would be behind. And what we'd have to do round seven to 12 is make up that, dis that distance. But in this fight, I think Zhang's going to be very dangerous very early. Joe's got to be very careful. And I think Joe's got to kind of juggernaut him mid to second half of the fight. How impressed were you, um, Zhang's performance against Hergovic? A lot of people had Zhang winning that fight. Yeah, I had Zhang, Zhang winning the fight. I think most people had Zhang winning the fight. You, you cannot be underestimated. The guy's a quality, top-level heavyweight that it's going to be difficult for everyone. I mean, who knows what's true. I heard certain top-name heavyweights bypassed him when looking for comeback fights. It's dangerous and difficult and dropped Hergovic once, twice. Tough fight. It was an odd fight because Hergovic seems to, to turn around, put his back to Zhang. It was, it was definitely, it was an odd fight, I'd say, for Hergovic. Yeah. But again, you know, that was a, that was a bomb stoner as well. It was a proper head-to-head -head fight. That Hergovic is a quality opponent. Hergovic is the, you know, the mandatories out there at the moment. Uh, Dubois, Hergovic, and Joyce. You know, Hergovic is absolutely no mug. Top, top level fighter. And Zhang didn't beat him, of course, but was perceived by the puppets of beating him. So it's a really tough fight coming up. Were you not, say, frustrated with the AJ comeback that it wasn't Joyce? Was there any discussions for that fight? No, I mean, I don't think that, if, if you're being like realistic, it was never going to be Joyce for that comeback. Joe's with BT and Frank. AJ's with Matchroom and DAZN. They're pl plotting their part, I think. AJ, Joyce should be for a world title, as and when it happens. If Joe wins a world title this year, I think Matt would be very interested in making that fight. Do you believe AJ wants that fight? I think, he'd t I think he'd take the fight if it was a chance to get a world title. I think AJ is the kind of guy, I know he says he's motivated by money now, I think he's motivated very much by being a world champion and by testing himself against the best. But why would, why would anyone really face Joe Joyce of AJ's level unless there was a reason oh, yeah. to do it, like a world title or a mandatory defence? So I think if Joe gets a world title... I'll be ringing up Frank and Eddie. And, sorry, Frank Warren will be ringing up Frank and Eddie and saying, let's make that's a great fight. It's a great. Listen, this country loves British fights. Fury, hopefully, will make Fury Joyce. AJ Fury could be made one day. AJ, AJ Joyce should be made. This is the 2012 Olympian against the 2016 Olympian. A little bit of kind of back and forth beef there between them as well. Terrific fight. Yeah, because Eddie came out in the recent interview that said that AJ wanted the Joyce fight and. You, did you any dis has there been any discussions at all with that possibly at all? He was talking about a private conversation he had with AJ. So whatever happened in that, I can't comment on that. But I do think the thing is when you're AJ's level and still he's at a very very high level, there's only particular reasons you take particular fights. But one of the reasons would be to get a world title. So I think Joe's got to have that world title. I mean, listen, if they meet later on in their careers when they may both have had world titles and they don't anymore, it's still an interesting fight. But right now, he's not going to be on AJ's radar. I mean, it's not... I don't think it's a fight his management would want. A fight that has been spoken about, especially within the fans and with boxing media, is the Joyce-Wilder fight. Yeah. Again, is that a fight you'd be interested in? I know Joyce would say yes to any fight, but... Joe would be up for that fight. I think it's... I think that fight is the fight with the most appeal to casuals of pretty much any matchup in boxing right now, save for possibly AJ Fury. I think the casuals in America would love it. 
I mean, it's the immovable object against the irresistible force. I mean, everyone will want to watch that and tune in because they want to know one thing. Can Joe Joyce take Deontay Wilder's right hand? And if he can, the fight's probably over. <laughs> You're not worried, though, because there were, there were discussions in terms of Joyce has got to change his style against Parker, but the amount of the, the punches which Joyce took in that fight were just... We were sat ringside going, how is he taking this, this level of punishment? Against Wilder, though, with someone that, that's capable of that amount of power, would you not be at all worried for your, for your man in there? I'm always concerned for Joe. I think I would say that when Joe gets clipped, it's, it's kind of always remarked upon by people. You know, when Joe Joyce gets hit, oh, look, he's taking another punch because it's very prominent that he has a great chin. Um, I'm not saying Joe doesn't get clipped because he does. But against Wilder, yeah, look, I think when you look at that Parker fight, there were tactical adjustments made by Salas. Um, and there'd be more tactical adjustments made against Wilder. But with a boxer like Joe Joyce, if he fought him, he might be 37, 38 years old. We're not going to make huge changes to Joe. Joe is what he is. And it's that that makes the Zhang fight exciting. And it's that which makes the Wilder fight very, very exciting. Because Joe's not going to suddenly turn into Lomachenko <laughs> in that fight. He's not. Obviously, there are discussions, and hopefully we get this in the UK. Uh, Fury Usyk, just first of all, if that fight happens in the UK, how big is that fight? Huge fight. I mean, undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. You'll be able to tell me uh, when that last happened. Maybe it was 20, 30 years ago. There's, there's no, for me as a boxing fan, there's no bigger fight this year than undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. It's a terrific fight. The two, in my opinion, most skilled boxers in the division. Uh, going against each other, terrific. Is it at all possible if that fight doesn't happen, Joyce could swoop in and, and, and fight Fury? Everything's possible. Yeah. Everything's possible, but I think it is happening. OK, moving on finally then as well, Lee Wood Lara. That's why we're here this weekend. What a fight that is. Weighing has just happened now. A bit of beef during the weigh-ins, what we all love. But um, talk me through that fight. A voluntary defence. I mean, I've said it time and time again. Lee Wood's got balls, hasn't he, for taking this one? Yeah, I mean... I think Eddie was saying yesterday he was pretty amazed when Lee would want it as a voluntary defence. It was great the way and actually real kind of that feel of I love it when um, hometown fans get behind a hometown fight. It's very, very special. You sometimes get it in London, but not really. It's normally in different parts of the UK. You look at what you know fans did for people like Carl Frampton and really, really get behind their fighter. I think, I can't, how can you... I think a lot of people look at this fight. I believe... The bookie's favourite is Lara. It's mad, really, isn't it? I can't believe that. And I understand why. But how can you bet against Lee Wood? How can you bet against Lee Wood? You watch that Conlon fight. He gets dropped by Conlon early. But he carries tremendous power. I think it is going to be an absolutely tremendous fight. And I've got Lee Wood for the win. It elevates him a little bit, that underdog mentality. I think that's what's been said time and time again. Each time he's the underdog, isn't he? Each time he's the underdog and he keeps winning, and he might be thinking, if I keep winning, why am I always the underdog? Because he's obviously trying to always test himself against the next level up. So credit to him. What a terrific, terrific ambassador for British boxing. Finally then, uh, there are talks still. Warrington wants the winner either way. Um, I obviously, perhaps like yourself, would like the Lee Wood to, to, to come through that fight. We said we like British fights in this interview. Lee Wood, Warrington, perhaps at the city ground. Leeds United versus Nottingham Forest. I mean, it doesn't really get any bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge, huge fight. I'm sure that's what Eddie wants. Yes. Um, and it's got that kind of, both of those guys, you're right, you think about another fighter with a big local following, Josh Warrington. So yeah, that's got to be on the matchroom dream wish list, hasn't it? Finally, final words for Janaid Boston. What do we expect Saturday night? Don't, Janaid, you don't have to go for the knockout. <laughs> You don't have to go for the knockout. You might be portrayed as a KO artist. You don't have to go for the knockout. We want to see progression. We want to get back to the changing room. We want a minimum of an 8 out of 10 performance. Hot and cold debrief on Saturday night. Top man. Thanks, Dan.